thing, hey. I feel like I feel like such a fucking swanky <laughs> motherfucker. Ooh, back up. Right. Oh no! What my shit done, questions. <laughs> so a few of the things we might go repeat over for the last time we talked, but nothing too much to be honest. With you. Just relax, be yourselves. So obviously, it's very different place. Just so relax. Just relax, be yourself, and if you guys want to get naked, that's cool. Cool. Yeah, no, I might do that. Yeah, that's cool. All righty, we got the back up here as well. All right, we're ready when you are, Vicky. Um, just is the recording down there. Right? Yeah, 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 we're good. All right, okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another segment of Ramsey Talks with me, Howell Davis. And with me is the one and only Alien Weppery. Hello, guys. How the hell are you doing today? Yeah, we're pretty, pretty good, good, mate. Pretty good. We, um, we met this guy in Wales. You did, didn't you? At the beginning of your tour, the first sold-out show here in the UK. I don't want to even have to ask, how the fuck did that go? That went fucking amazing, mate. They went mental, didn't they? Yeah, they fucking did, mate. Yeah, fucking right. That everyone is like destroying the roof, chatting back to you, that's what I was going to say. Everyone's kind of singing back to you in Maori. That was pretty rad, I'm not going to lie. How does that make you feel, like, to hear that, like, on the other side of the world, people picking it up so well? It's buzzy, man. It's really trippy to see how people, like, that, you know, kind of don't have much to do with the culture, they're still, like, into it, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And it's kind of like, I think that's the thing about metal, is we like to learn a lot more about like where the things are going. Like, you know, if you're listening to Rammstein, you automatically want to know what the words mean. And you start teaching yourself German, and like, the who they speaking, like, Mongolian, stuff like that. People are picking that up. And now you guys are putting Maori on the metal map, finally. And to be honest, like I said before at the beginning, the past 14 months for you guys has been awesome. And this, you guys are playing the main stage over there tomorrow, first thing 11 a.m. Could be the biggest show you've done. Absolutely buzzed. Yeah. Ah, mate, I can't, is it the most important? I I mean I think I, I, I don't want to put a scale on that as you know it's the most important. It's for us, you know, every show is important and I think for us we, we just want to deliver that same energy, that same show to mm. anyone who comes to see us. And I mean, you know, people who are you know, who will get off their ass and come down and see us? We wanna, we wanna give them that full experience. So, I mean, anyone who comes and watches us tomorrow, we're gonna give them it. Gonna I um, there's, there's, mm. the face with the there's, <laughs> there's a video of Lamb of God playing um, main stage here in Donington in 2007, and like, growing up, going to high school and stuff, I was always watching that video, and I always fucking loved it. So. To be in that position, and playing that, stage that as well, fucking too. stage is like, whoa, holy shit, you know? Um, I'm, I'm where I was dreaming of like three, four years ago, you know? Yeah, man. Like, what sort of memories? Because, like, uh, of downloads do you guys have? Because this is the first time you've ever been here in Donington. Yeah, like, man. A, like, as a fan, as a band. This is it. This yeah. is ground zero for you guys to download. That's awesome. Because not only, I think it's gonna be one of the biggest band, one of the biggest crowds you'll have as well. But that got me thinking, yes, your songs worked so, so well. I saw them in a confined space and fuel. How, are they, how do you think they're gonna translate to a bigger, wider, open arena? I, I feel like, yeah, like what I was saying before, like whoever we're gonna be playing to, I feel like, you know, sometimes on the bigger stages, we like to, you know, make it, more, I guess, crazy on stage. These guys have more room to move around. More room, you know. Sometimes it's fucking sprint to the other side of the stage and shit. Off the drum riser and off the PA and whatnot. Yeah, mate. Yeah. You need that energy to go up there as well. Because it's 11 a.m. People are going to be hung over on the Saturday after Def Leppard. That's like, and you guys are going to be following Def Leppard from that as well. So you guys, how, what is going to be going through your heads? Is it just going to te- like go through it as you would do with any other show, or is there something else different? How are you guys going to get yourself in the zone? Nothing. nothing. Nothing goes through our heads ever, so um, <laughs> we, just play, we, we just don't play have them. brains. Who needs them at this time? It's who you know, not what you know, you know what I mean? Mm. This is why I go into the things I do, right? I could barely read my own writing up there as it goes, so to be honest with you, I think we're all kind of in the same boat there, which yeah, is right. awesome. And to be honest with you, right, so the fans back home here, like, uh, like I was going through uh, the Alien Weaponry fans' uh, Facebook page, and everywhere I posted up the videos of uh, your Cardiff show, whatever it's going with. The fa- your fans from back home are all going nuts for it. Like the ball, the ball over there has properly started like rolling for over ages and ages now. But it's, it feels as real. The community for Alien Weaponry now seems 
so vivid and so right there, and we, we, we welcomed into it. Do you guys have the best fans on the entire goddamn planet? I fucking I think so, mate. Well, there's always you know special connection with the fans, you know, because they get into it so much. You know, we've had people that literally told me that you know our music has helped them through a really tough time, and I I can relate with that shit because some music that I've listened to like growing up that's helped helped me through a lot, you know. Mm. So if I can you know deliver that to someone else, it's like the best feeling ever. Yeah. And we're all so excited to see you here as well. Like in the UK, especially the buzz about you guys has been has been nuts. Like I've just said now, uh, and but I think what the most important thing about that is is because you guys bring that energy and the youth from from it. You know, because every time we say, "Oh my God, we're in weaponry," and it's like, "Oh yeah, the youngest guys are like 17." It's like, like what? But you know, do you uh, is there a bit of a downside to that as well, or is just everyone just being so supportive? Has the old guard come approached you at all from anything at all from that? I mean, I think for us, like we. We don't we don't like to make a big deal of our age and stuff and I, I think we just wanna, you know, be a band. Yeah. And I don't think it's hold you back either. You've just brought it and pushed yeah, it forward. I mean, you know, like uh, maybe a few years ago, there was there was a couple of things where either we we got turned down for playing or something, mm. um, just because the I guess the promoters weren't sure that we could pull it off. Yeah. Which is, I mean, fair enough. You know, who, yeah. what kind of promoter would go? Yeah, you know, what's a good idea? Let's mm. get a couple of fourteen-year-olds on a festival. You know, it's mm. it's it's fair enough. But yeah, for us now, I feel like we've. We've solidified what we're doing and we've kind of proven ourselves enough for mm. anyone to look at us and go, they're a good band to get on. Yeah, absolutely. And what are the most like asked questions you get from your fans? What are the most asked questions? Um, we, get, we get all sorts, eh? Hey? Like, I mean, you know, there's, there's <laughs> definitely, you know, the where, where do you get your inspiration from and, you know, it's all you know, around what, you, what, surely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're going. Uh, yeah, all that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think, um, you know, we, we do get asked a lot of different questions. I always like it when someone comes and asks me a question that I've never heard before. Yeah. You know, it's, it's always really good to be able to kind of, I guess, talk on a more personal level with, with fans. I... I you know, sometimes they come up to you and be like, hey, you want to, you know, fucking chill out and get a drink or whatever, rather than like, can I get a photo, can I get a signature, yeah. bye. You know? how, does, how does that but make you feel? Would you rather give, like, have, give the time and space to your fans to have a drink, chill out with them, have a great time, rather than just like using you just to get a photo and just to get that social media likes oh, yeah, and validation? Yeah, but it's always better because you always actually get to, you know, find out who your yeah. fans are and, you know, what they're into because, you know, Exactly. You know, right. like after the Wales show, we like hung out with a bunch of them. We, you know, had mm. some drinks and stuff. So yeah, man, it was awesome as well. And to be honest, like a lot of your new songs as well are coming through, slipping through the cracks there, which is awesome. You played a brand new song as well, which is a fucking belter as well. Yeah, but you know, yeah, you, oh, mate, and Ahikar as well has went down so so well. There's a huge huge weight to that song as well. What goes through your mind when you're actually playing that song? Because I know a lot of your a lot of your songs go through the history of. Maori New Zealand, but that one especially because it's so recent. What, what can you explain to the Ramsey watchers today what that song is all about? Um, so that song is about something that happened in the 1950s in New Zealand. So not that 1953. Mm. So not that long ago in the general scheme of things. But basically, this was just before the Queen was um, going to come and visit New Zealand for the first time, mm. um, and the Auckland City Council decided that they were going to remove a Māori village from the waterfront that she was going to be driving past because they, they, they didn't want her to look at it or anything because they thought it, it would be a dreadful eyesore. Mm. So basically they evicted all the local Māori that were living there and they burnt that whole place to the ground. Mm. And um, not many people know about it and um, they, they, they didn't get fuck all of compensation. They got probably about well, Two, three million dollars, which would. <laughs> yeah, well, this was and and this was years afterwards as well when the government was trying to sell the land mm. that they they'd kicked them out of, and so there was a there was a whole bunch of people who mm. were from that area that occupied Bastion Point there, and actually they were forcefully removed by armed police um, yeah. in the end. Like you know, they they 
they were occupying the place for uh, I think just over a year mm. and um, pretty much yeah they were forcefully removed the land was sold and I think the the iwi got about three million in compensation which, which is, is not even enough to buy a house there yeah yeah so I mean <sighs> it's I mean it's, it's insane right man absolutely so I can only imagine the way playing that song comes out to you because I saw that when you were doing it live just the, the passion the fire in your guys' eyes was un goddamn canny it was insane but I can only imagine your latest album is gonna be nothing but that drive being put to it yeah well I mean we're definitely we want that same kind of just anger and, and yeah. passion just going going into that uh, but I think musically for me at least I, I'm looking to kind of try and change things up with the drums um, mm. you know get a bit funky with it you know yeah gotta do that man stuff so much like groove that. to your signs as well yeah. must be said so I kind of wait until that drops around but for the meantime guys you can listen to two which is out now which is celebrating its first year anniversary which is absolutely great if you want everything else to go with alien weaponry you could go to alienweaponry.com or you could go to facebook.com forward slash alien weaponry and of course stay in stay contact <laughs> keep in touch with everything Ramsey by going to ramsey.co.uk UK. Boom. Alien weaponry out. <laughs> yeah. Thank